Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes Everywhere Online. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I put together a really pretty seasonal table runner, perfect for Valentine's Day. I decided to call this table runner the Joyful Hearts Table Runner because for me, Valentine's Day and hearts and all of the beautiful reds and pinks, it really does make me feel quite joyful. The table runner that I'm going to show you how I made in this video is constructed using three 12 inch quilt blocks. Those blocks I made in the previous video. So if you wanna see how I made the blocks, check out that video. Super fun, super easy to put together and it's great in any size. But for this project, we're going to have a finished 12 inch block, which means your block will be 12 and a half inches before sewing it into the project. Table runners are all kind of constructed the same way. You're going to have your design blocks, you're going to have your sash, and then you're going to have your borders and binding. It's just, honestly, they're kind of the same project over and over but utilizing different fabric and different block designs. So for today's table runner it will take three 12 inch blocks. It will then use the sashing. I went ahead and did a double sash. I thought that was really pretty and I also put in cornerstone blocks. Just adds a little more interest if you don't want to do the cornerstone challenge and I can't blame you. <laughs> They're tricky. Uh, just cut your sash all in solid strips for the outer border. When I designed this project, I designed it specifically with these colors in mind. So it's a beautiful triadic color scheme, which means it uses three colors. So it's essentially a red, yellow, and blue project. But because of tints and shades, we get all sorts of really pretty pinks and you know, different shades other than our primaries. But essentially, it's a red, yellow, and blue project. So if you decide to make this project, I would encourage you to try and utilize uh, in the places where they are located those colors. I think you'll find that it makes for a very, very pleasing finished project. The tools you'll need to make this project are as follows. A rotary cutter, a cutting mat, quilting ruler. I used a two and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler. Pins or clips, thread snips, an iron, an ironing board, and a sewing machine. It is a machine project. For your materials, you will need your heart blocks. I used three different colors for my blocks, but you could do all of the same colors. You could do that any way you like, but you'll need three heart blocks. You'll need a background fabric. You'll need fabric for the corner stones. You'll need something to make your outer sash, and you'll want something for your binding. You'll also need quilt batting, thread, and backing fabric. Okay, that's what you need. Let's jump in and make today's table runner. I have placed on the cutting mat the different pieces that we will use to construct the Joyful Hearts table runner. And you can see I've already made three blocks in the heart pattern. And I will link over to the heart block so you can see exactly how I made these. So we're going to have three of those. You're going to cut three strips. This is your background fabric, one and a half inches. You want three strips cut on your width of fabric. This is what I'm going to be using as my outer sash. And you will want to cut also three strips on width of fabric. And these are two and a half inch strips. And then you, if you decide to do the cornerstones, you can skip doing those because they are a little bit more tricky. And then just use solid strips. But I'm going to do cornerstones in my project. And so I'm going to need two sizes. I'll need two and a half inch square blocks, four of those, and then I will need eight one and a half inch square blocks. So eight of these and four of these. And this will go with this. And then these will come over and be attached onto here. So that is what you need to make your quilt top. For the binding, you will need three strips cut on with the fabric and we're going to also cut them at two and a half inch wide strips. 
All table runners are going to kind of go together the same way. And so what you're going to do is you're going to make your blocks. You want to decide where do you want, how do you want your blocks arranged? And so if I decide I want them to be in this order, then that's what I'm going to do. And then I know I want to have the background fabric in between each. So what I will do is figure out the order. I think I'll go with this. And then I'll take my first block. I'll take that strip that I'm going to use as my background strip and it's going to go on. And this is my cheat. What I do is I just cut with the fabric and then I will lay the piece onto the edge and then I'll just cut it just a little bit longer. That way I don't have to measure something else and wind up being a little bit challenged on the measurements. I just cut it a little long, I get it stitched on there, I press it back and I'll trim it down to be flush. So for this one, we'll go ahead and get two ready to go. So that's my step one, is to go ahead and get this sash in between each of the blocks. So I will go ahead and put this on, we'll press it open and trim it down, and then the next one will go on, and then the final. As I'm putting this uh, sash piece onto the blocks, this is what I want to show you. I want you to notice that on the upper part of the block, it goes all the way to the edge. The heart is all the way over here. But on the lower part, which is where we have the half square triangle, we have this little bit of like a gap. And that is what you want. That is normal. The reason we have this is this is our seam allowance. And as we put our piece on and we stitch with our quarter inch seam allowance, then when we turn it, we'll have the point. So when I make half square triangles, I do like to press the work open. And what you will see is when you press open those seams on your HST blocks, you'll wind up having this little bitty triangle here. And that is a visual cue for you so that as you're piecing that strips onto the block. Sew with the wrong side of your block up so that you can see this information. And as you're approaching this part of the, the stitch line, the sewing, you want to make sure that as this is passing under the machine, so you're pushing it through this way, you want the machine needle to be just this side of that point. And when you do that, you will have a perfect point on the right side of your work. So I always press my HST blocks open so that I have that landmark to see because I'm not a robot and I don't have all completely perfect seam allowances everywhere I go. I mean, we always strive for that, but I don't have them. You know, I'm a human being, so I press my seams open and then I can see that little bit and then I know that I'm in the right place. Okay, that's all. So I had shown you that I was going to pin on both sides of the first block. Then what I'm doing is on the next two blocks, I'm just going to pin on the right side. And then I can chain piece all of my right side blocks. I've got the first part of the sash onto the blocks. So you can see on the first one, I've done the left and right. And on the remaining two, I've just done the right side. Now what I'll do is connect this to here, press, and then connect this one to this one. And then the first part of our quilt top is ready to go. The first part of the sash is done. I just wanted to check in so that you could see how that looks. 
and I wound up at all of my center points I pressed towards. So for all of the hearts, the seams are going away from the heart and towards the center piece. And I kind of feel like it gives it a little dimension doing that. So the next step is I'm going to nip all of these little edges off to make all of that even. And then our next step is going to be to get everything pieced for the cornerstones. And essentially, it will look like this. So we'll have, this will be a 12 inch strip, a uh, 12 and a half inch strip, I should say. This is where it gets tricky <laughs> with the measuring. You have to remember that seam allowance. So all of these strips will be 12 and a half inches, and then the inch and a half cornerstones will go on to the end of each one. And I'll just do those for the entire length of the project. So there will be three bottom, three at the top. So I'll go ahead and get those made and come back and show you how it looks. I'm putting on the second side of the uh, sash with the cornerstones. You can see I've got the bottom piece on, doing the top. What I want you to see is that I have pressed the seams open on the sash and lined up my seams and then I've literally pinned at every seam. While I do like the wonder clips, I do find also that the pins will hold it just perfectly in place. So what I've done is pinned and then I've pinned in the center to hold it in place and then again at both seams. And I'll just really take my time putting this piece on and give it a really good press and then we'll have our first layer of sash on the project. I've got the first strip of sash that includes the cornerstones at each corner of the blocks onto my quilt top and I will be honest with you it is a challenge especially because for this pattern I just went with one inch of the background fabric separating the blocks and it is a little bit tricky handling such small pieces uh, but you know what it sure looks good when it's on there so the next step for me is to put on my outer sash and I'm going to do something similar in that what I have done is taken my outer I've cut my outer fabric a two and a half inch strip actually I used this from a jelly roll this was a gift from a viewer and it works so beautifully into the project I'm going to use it and what I wound up doing was taking three jelly roll strips and I pieced them all to one long strip and what I'm going to do is to cut from my edge and I'll put the edge on and it will be flush and then I will piece long strips with cornerstones again like here so it'll be like this when it's done like that. I just think it's going to be gorgeous. I can't wait to have it done. So what I will do is get all of this outer strip on and then I'll come back and see you. And then it's just a matter of making some choices about thread and quilting. So far I love it. I think it's beautiful. The fabrics together are so, so pretty. And I want you to know that even if you do not have absolute perfection in your cornerstones, don't worry about it. Still finish your project, work your way through it. They're hard to do. Full disclosure, they're difficult, but do them anyway because in the doing you will learn so much. So, okay, uh, let's uh, get this outer sash on and I'll be back with you as soon as all of that's finished. I've attached the edge of the outer sash onto the quilt top. I always work that way. I always put on my sides or what they call the east-west 
and then I do the what the, the top and bottom or the north south so my east and west are attached and now I'm going to come in with my last couple of strips and you can see I've sewn on the larger cornerstone and so what we're going to have is for all of these seams to line up here in the end and this one is a lot easier because I only have to match two seams. <laughs> I only have to get this one to go with here. And I'll have that on each end. So it's only two seams to match. So what I will do is go right sides together. And you can see I've pressed open. It's so much easier to line up your seams, I think, when they're open like this. So I'm going to get it pinned. I'm going to go ahead and get my top and bottom on and then I'll come back and show you the final quilt top and then we'll make some choices about thread. The quilt top is finished and I just want you to see how it looks with both levels of sash on. It's so pretty. Oh my gosh. So darn pretty. So the next thing I'll do, and I'll do this overnight, is I will go ahead and get it set up and ready for quilting. And the way that I do my quilting is I will uh, pin baste. I will tell you that for my quilting, I really like stitch in the ditch. I know people are not crazy about that, that they feel like it's, um, what's the word? Um, beginnerish, but you know, I really like it because I feel like the fabrics and the colors are so pretty. So I'm going to stitch, stitch in the titch and I'm going to get through my uh, thread and find thread that will really go with each one of these hearts. And uh, it will leave my bobbin thread the same, but it will change out and use something that will match the hearts because this is a really gorgeous piece <laughs> it's so pretty okay let me go uh pull my threads and see what i've got And that's all there is to making this beautiful table runner project to decorate your Valentine table. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you will make it. And you know, if you're not confident enough to do the cornerstones, I totally get that. You can omit those. You might uh, experiment and omit the little tiny one and a half inch squares. They are tricky and just do in the large corners, the two and a half inch cornerstones in the four corners. So try them even if you don't feel quite ready. You're not going to learn how to do it unless you physically jump in and make a few things utilizing that element. That's the project for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you will make this project and I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy quilting!